Welcome to Let's Get Real Wednesday. We are so thankful for you to tune in. We pray that all is well with you and your family. And we know that we are coming up on Thanksgiving next week. And so we want to, I pray and hope that you have a blessed Thanksgiving. I realize there are going to be many that um, that's normally around the table that won't be at the table this year. Even in my own family, we'll definitely miss, uh, I'll miss my mother and my sister and my and so I ask that you would uh, continue to pray for us and all those that have lost family in 2020. Also, I would like to inform you for the, those of you that um, may, may be in need or maybe you may know a family during Thanksgiving that need a little aid, a little helping hand that uh, here at WGBC Willow Grove, that we want to be a blessing to those families. So if you would contact us uh, by calling, uh, either emailing us, you can call at uh, Area code 214-371-7325 and speak with the uh, reception or maybe leave word on the voicemail and we will try to make sure it will be a blessing to the family. Uh, we won't be able to serve as many families as we did last year because of COVID, but we're going to do what we can. So we ask you to contact us and we're going to do uh, what we can on this end to be a blessing to the family. And this is what we do in our community here in uh, Willow Grove. And also I want to ask you to continue to pray for our first responders, all of our doctors and nurses. And also I want you to pray for the body of Christ uh, because we are first responders. So if you would join me in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask you, God, you forgive me of all of my sins and forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. I pray on behalf of your people. Lord, I thank you, God, for those that are tuned in. I ask you, God, to be with the bereaved family. Then, God, I ask you, God, to continue to bless those that are sick in the body that you may touch and heal. Be with our first responders, and I ask you, God, to bless our world. Be with our leaders. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, uh, the, uh, the Apostle Paul that uh, we're going to look at real quickly, we talk about Let's Get Real Wednesday. I want to look at Paul, uh, some of the things that Paul went through. And one of the things I want to tell you that even in this day and time that we know the corruption that's in the world. And I want you to know corruption was even during that time and it was, uh, Paul was a victim of it as well. And I know many of us have been wrongly accused and we've seen the injustice. And when I think about those that have lost their life, that I want to make sure that we... Um, let their, let their lives, let their names continue to live on. When I think about uh, uh, Floyd, uh, how he lost his life, and I think about the young lady, uh, last name Taylor, I uh, ask you to continue to, uh, let's pray for their family. Uh, John Bowden, when we think about him, uh, we also want to be a blessing, and let's pray about his family, make sure that his name is continued to live on as well. So there are many others I know that I'm not able to call by name, but um, I want to make sure that we realize that at being an ambassador of Christ, we have an obligation and responsibility to stand up for those that uh, have lost their life uh, injustice and wrongly accused as well. I, I was really wanting to share with you what's really in my spirit. And one of the things that's in my spirit is that when I, I know that there are other believers uh, that said they believe in the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, and I'm not doubting their uh, belief. But, but I am calling to challenge their, um, I guess, their action. When, when I see the hatred, and you said that you're a child of God, and when I see the, uh, the demise and how uh, many are standing on the side of what I would like to call wrong, and someone said, well, what makes you think that you know what's right? I think that when you are uh, loving uh, people for who they are, and it's not based upon the color of their skin, but when you just love people, I think that's what uh, represents standing for what is right. And that is represents standing for Christ. So when I look at the, uh, uh, some of my brothers that are, um, that are pastors and believers, uh, when I look at what is happening, when I see some have taken a view and said that they believe in pro-life, but yet and still, here it is, a man can beg for his life but you won't take a stand for him, but yet and still you say you're for pro-life. So I don't get it, it's very confusing for me. 
So, but I want to look at Paul in, in chapter, uh, Acts chapter 28 is where we're going to go. And I'm going to paraphrase some of these scriptures and I want you to take our time and really read it. Hopefully I can bring it uh, real quickly uh, to you tonight that would uh, help paint a picture that would help you to have a better understanding of some of the things that Paul went to because Paul was wrongly accused. And it all started because Paul stood up for a young lady uh, that was being, uh, being a victim. And Paul stood up and, and helped deliver her. And, and because it cut the gain off of people that was making profit off of her. And they, they, they accused Paul and for treason, treason and, and many other things. They lied upon him. And so I want you to look at him now. Now that Paul has been delivered to uh, Rome. And it says in Acts chapter 28. And let me start at this uh, verse 16. And it says in Acts uh, 28 and 16. And when we came to Rome, the Assyrian delivered the prisoner to the captain of the guard. But Paul was, was permitted to dwell uh, by himself. And with a soldier kept that kept him. Basically, there was a soldier that was trained, chained to Paul. And, and we see this, uh, that Paul was, uh, was permitted to live by himself. But yet and still, he had a guard with him at all times. And then we see in verse 17 that Paul said, And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were coming together, he said unto them, Men and brothers, though I have committed nothing against the people or custom of our father, yet was I delivered a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of Rome. Basically, Paul said, you know, I, I didn't do anything wrong. But, but you know, uh, and he's pleading his case. He began to uh, let them know that I, I'm a victim of, uh, unfortunately, because of the fact that here it is that Paul, we know that when you go back and, and read in Acts uh, 25, we see that Paul made an appeal and here it is that when he made his appeal that either the other leaders basically said that, you know, they didn't really find a reason uh, to convict him. But because Paul had basically said that he wanted to go and see and talk to Caesar, he wanted to plead his case to Caesar. They basically said, well, we're going to let you go ahead and go to Rome and let Caesar listen to your case. But Paul began to plead his case. And the reason I'm bringing this out and I want to take my time is because you're going to see Paul stand and be an ambassador. You're going to see Paul stand and speak uh, on the behalf of Christ. How Paul is going to take a stand and talk about his deliverance. How God spoke to him. How God changed him. And I believe if you have really been changed, you should not be ashamed to tell someone. If Christ had really come into your life, we should not be ashamed to take a stand for Christ and speak for what is right. So I brought these names up. Uh, many, uh, many have lost their life. Here it is John Bowden that he lost his life sitting in his own apartment, you know? And, and, and what really bothered me is that I think other believers, other believers, all of us should have been banding together because we just want justice and we want what it was done right. We want the story told right. When you think about uh, Floyd, how he lost his life, here it is on national TV that here it is, you see a white officer uh, with his hands in his pocket. And here it is, this man's knee is on his neck. But yet and still, we see how many began to uh, divide the country. Many began to take stands that are uh, trying to back the blue. It's not about backing the blue. It's about standing for what is right. So from that, we, we, we begin, basically began to hear about Black Lives Matter. And now they're taking the movement of Black Lives Matter, trying to use it to like segregate us, but it's not. Black Lives Matter represent all people. Black Lives Matter is just trying to inform the world that all lives matter and all of us should be treated equally. But we as black people need to understand we need to make sure that we understand the true corruption because of the fact I think a lot of times we would not use our voice and really take a strong stand. I am not, I am not standing and speaking for injustice. I'm speaking of justice. Now make sure that you get this right. 
because of the fact that there is corruption. And I want to make sure that if you are a child of God, you should be wanting to stand for what is right. So watch Paul. Paul made an appeal to them. Paul made his statement to them. We see this all the way from verse 18 all the way to 21. And we also see some things that Paul was saying. He was telling his story. But notice that in verse 21, they basically said, oh, we hadn't heard about this case. They act as if they didn't know about the case. They act as if they, didn't, they had never heard about what had taken place with Paul. And we find in Scripture that it wasn't true. There's a lot of things that, he, uh, that many know about, but they act as if they did know about. Matter of fact, watch what was said. That when Paul began to speak now in verse 25, it said, And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Paul had spoken one word, and then it says, well speaking. And, and then the Holy Ghost began to speak to Paul. And I want you to watch what the Lord told Paul. And this is what, this is what he said to Paul in verse 26, saying, Go unto the people and say, Hear ye shall hear and shall not understand. Seeing ye shall see and not proceed. Now, now watch this. I want to talk to you just real quickly. Uh, real quickly from a subject, an ambassador of Christ, hearing and seeing. An ambassador of Christ, hearing and seeing. What does that mean? Basically, do you know that if you don't want to hear something, and even though you heard it, you want to act like you didn't hear it. You see something, but yet and though you don't want to deal with it, now you want to act like you don't see it. See, I want you to know that there are many, they hear and they can see what is happening, but they want to act like they can't hear, and they want to act like they didn't see. Now, why is why am I bringing this up? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's because of the fact, if we're going to let our country heal, we're going to have to address the things that we see and, and, and be able to deal with the things that we hear. So we'll notice, what, notice what, what Paul said in his verse 27. So the scripture says, for the heart of the people is wax gross. Hmm. Wax gross, the heart, that means they don't care. You know, you know it, it's amazing about that people that say that they love, but it's amazing how can you say you love and you're pro-life, but then you, when you see someone lose their life, it has no effect on you, you know? Uh, you, won't, you won't say anything. It bothered me because of the fact that I began to realize that all these, uh, in, uh, uh, some of the mega pastors in the day and time that we live in, and I know I'm going to mess this word up because an angelic uh, basically, basically wouldn't take a stand, not taking a stand, not saying a word on things that they saw things that they heard, not coming together, but yet and still saying you for pro-life, you know, that you would get on national TV and, and, and social media laughing at our democracy about what have taken place about our new president-elect, you know, but yet and still you are a leader leading God's people. You know, we have a man here in Dallas, downtown Jefferson. Here it is that you said you love God, you represent Christ. But yet and still, you take a stand on the side of wrong. I, I don't understand it. It bothers me. It bothers me. So I think that we as body believers, we're going to have to take a stand, use our voice, and realize that we are also ambassadors of Christ. That we need to speak against this injustice and hold these people accountable and begin to be able to recognize corruption. So watch what Paul said in verse 27. For the heart of the people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be, what, converted. He said, the only way that you're going to see these people change is that they're going to have to be what? Converted. 
Converted means that, you know what? You got to change. You got to be able to repent and recognize that you were wrong. You were wrong about laughing about. You were wrong about the fact that when you wouldn't stand up, you were wrong about the fact that here it is, you want to back, the, back something that was wrong. And it's time for us all to band together and stand for what is right. You know, when I hear brothers like Roland Martin that's taking a stand and a political stand and in bringing education, the Bible said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And we have brothers that's trying to bring us knowledge. We need to learn how to cover them. And what does that mean? Pray for them. You know, we have leaders. And you know, when I, I think about back in the day, I think about even today, my good friend, John Wiley Price. You know, I don't totally agree with everything, but when I see men that are standing for what is right, I'm going to cover them. I'm going to support them. And I think we as a body of believers, we need to learn how to support leaders that stand for what is right. Nobody is perfect. But I think that when we see brothers and sisters that are willing to stand, our new elect president, our vice president, I think we should cover that sister. When we see sisters over like in Georgia that are standing for what is right, helping raising, uh, get the vote out and raising funds, we need to stand and support. You may only have $5, but you know what? We need to donate that $5 to help for what is right. That, uh, and so I come, I come using my platform and I'm asking you, use your platform, use your own personal social media in your own way and be that ambassador of Christ. Get the word out. Maybe this is a great time, Thanksgiving. Maybe this is a great time to use Thanksgiving to use your voice, to not only telling God that you're thankful, but also let your testimony be known that I'm an ambassador of Christ. I hear and I see what God would have for me to do. So let's be real about it. Let's be real about it. So this is Pastor Walker from Widow Grove Baptist Church, in Dallas, Texas. Let's get real Wednesday. We're so thankful for you to tune in. I pray that this Thanksgiving, I know it's going to be different. It's going to be different because we have COVID. I want you, don't believe it. Don't believe the hype. I want you to take cover. I want you to be smart. I want you to realize and be able to explain to your family. We may not all be able to get together this year because of the fact we want to keep everyone safe. So I want you to let's maybe forego having big celebration this Thanksgiving and find other ways that we can pull together the family and let the family know that we love one another and we're still together and let's keep each other covered. Let's wear our masks. Let's do some of the things that our doctors and our scientists are telling us. Because of the fact we have, we're seeing people that are sick, we're seeing people that are dying all over the world. The number is going up. So let's not be the next victim when we can help with the problem. Let's help be part of the solution. So I'm asking you, use your voice, stand for what is right, speak against evil, and call those out that are standing on the wrong side of injustice. I pray and hope that God will continue to bless you and bless your family. And I ask you to support us here at WGBC. And you can support us, number one way to support us right now, we just ask you, hit that button, subscribe to us, hit that button and give us a thumb up and help us get this word out, to get this gospel out. Thank you for tuning in. Be blessed.